have you back. It is the most talked about show on TV now that The Bachelor has finished. Married at First Sight follows four couples as they tie the knot, honeymoon, and then they try to live together, having only met for the first time at the altar. Some work, some gave us fireworks. Like Claire and Johnny, I think they only lasted a week, that couple. It's <laughs> terrible. And tomorrow night, it's the final, where we get to see which of the couples will actually stay together or go their separate ways. Now, I've been loving this show, Mel. Yeah. Absolutely love it. And an old friend, he's the one that helped us put together Edge Strangers in a Wedding years ago. He's a psychologist, John Aiken. He is part of the show. So I caught up with him on Skype from Sydney earlier to try and get you the goss. We miss you in New Zealand, but we're very proud of what's happening. Married at First Sight, what a watch. I know, it's been a, a, an amazing ride for me. Uh, we're into Series 2 now of this, and I couldn't really expect that it, had done, that it would do so well both in Australia and in New Zealand. But it's a, it's a relationship show that really grabs the viewers and uh, hauls them along on this journey. Speaking of which, after two seasons and your experience as a psychologist, what do you think attracts people to each other? Well, I think I'm particularly looking when I'm matching people uh, on two areas, main areas. One is personality. Are they kind? Can they compromise? Can they bring up issues softly? Can they take responsibility? And can they resolve arguments? And then you put them in the experiment and, and then you watch things uh, unfold. Claire and Jono, that didn't work out. Do you think there was any signal there when they started living together that things weren't going to work? Well, I actually think things looked pretty bad for them in the honeymoon, Mike. When he was in the canoe, she was winding him up because he was scared of the crocodiles, calling him a princess. And what we know in psychology is that if you're putting your partner down, if you're patronising towards them, particularly when they're under stress, it's a very bad sign. And when I saw that, I thought, we've got major problems here. And it's interesting too, because you look at Mark and Christy, they obviously didn't connect right at the start. But, you know, the bets going around our living room were that they would possibly be a couple that stay together. And then Xavier and Simone, they, to me, seem too good to be true. Can that happen in a relationship? Yeah, look, Xavier and Simone... Uh, have a lot of similarities. But their biggest struggle uh, is that he is incredibly rigid with his routines. He does his hair for 40 minutes in the morning. He eats protein. <laughs> he trains. Right. He loves his footy. And uh, it's a very uncomplicated lifestyle. And their struggle is whether he can let her into his life. And that's something to look out for going into decision day. For Chrissy and Mark, distance is a big issue. Now, although when we matched them, they were both prepared to move for love, and that's one of the reasons why we put them together. When push comes to shove in the experiment, you find out their real intentions, and for these guys, they're not sure whether they want to actually move to be with one another. What are those little things you think as a psychologist that can absolutely break it? Yeah, you look, know, the little things can start to chip away at the strength of a relationship. Uh, the question question is what you can embrace and what you need to modify with your partner. Now, Erin doesn't have a filter, as you quite rightly say. So, basically, whatever she thinks, it comes out of her mouth. Uh, now, Bryce is a very calm, composed guy, and that's one of the reasons we put him with her, because she's so anxious. Uh, and he doesn't tend to find her language too much of an issue. So, for them, they're OK on that front. On the other hand, Chris... And, and, and Mark, they're very, uh, two very different people. And uh, I think at times she looks at him and says, I don't know whether he's, a, he's enough city for me. So little things can come into it. It will be an individual uh, taste. Uh, but ultimately what we found in this experiment is that the couples that side together when they're under stress stay together. And that's what you want to look out for throughout the whole four weeks. In our day-to-day -day relationships for perhaps people that meet a new partner, is there a time frame we should give ourselves? No, I tend... Well, I would tend to say to people that don't make big decisions in the first 12 months, Mike, because when you meet someone, you tend to fall hard. Your brain fills with a whole cocktail of uh, different chemicals. And, you know, when you're love-struck, you're sort of skipping around, everything's amazing... And then after about 12 months, it dies down and you're looking at your partner going, well, are we really compatible? And so what I would say to people is, by all means, throw yourself into it, get to know them, have fun, 
novelty is great, but wait 12 months before you make the big decisions, like moving in together, like marriage, like engagement, because um, you just need to have uh, an understanding and a good sense of uh, who they are before you do that. Right now, Tom, we've got to go, but I've got one more question for you. You might be able to help me. Here in New Zealand, the bachelor's broken up with the bachelorette that he chose. People are saying it's a failure. As a psychologist on this show, Married at First Sight, when the couples don't work out, do you see that yep. as a failure of your psychology? No, not at all. I don't think I could do this and look at it in terms of success failure. The way I do it, Mike, is I, I put them together based on hard science and then I watch them like everyone else in New Zealand to see whether or not they're going to stay together. Some of them will do really well, others won't. And the fact is, like The Bachelor, there's many variables that come into it that you can't see coming. It might be an over-involved mother-in-law. It could be a really toxic fight style like Jono and Claire. Or it could be that there's no chemistry. Whatever the case, you just sit back and you say, OK, if they don't make it, hopefully they've learnt something from it. And it's the same with The Bachelor. You know, hopefully those two coming out of it can say, I know what now I want more or less in my next partner. Fantastic. Always hard to predict the vagaries of the heart, isn't it, John? So we look forward to seeing what happens with Married at First Sight as it comes to a conclusion here in New Zealand. We'll catch up with you very soon. Thanks for your time. Great to talk to you, Mike. Oh, that was insightful, Mike. Yeah, thanks, Mel. I can't wait. Tomorrow night, TV3, we will find out what happens. Do not miss it.